I made the CEO shout and storm out of a meeting. It was like jackpot anger. <laughs> Nice. It's like, you know, when you're at the arcade and the ticket machine just spins to 500 and they all pay out. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He just he went off. He went off and just left. Do you regret your approach to that? That one, not at all. No. But the other one I do because I lost a million pounds, at least. Oh, no. With a single email. Hello, I'm Chris Lisserman and welcome to Sparks, a series by Interactive Workshops. In each episode, we talk about something we can spark in work and life. From how to spark culture, to how to spark a workplace, to how to spark a strike. Seems everyone's striking. Teachers, nurses, train drivers, should we strike? It's a movement, Chris. I'm actually refusing to go on in this podcast until I get a small pay rise. Uh, that's going to be awkward. Have you got a placard? I uh, have a banner. Okay. I've got a banner. Are you just going to leave? Uh, unless I get what I want, I'm gonna yeah, no, I'm gonna stand it with it. Okay. And that banner says "Client Delight." Client Delight. Maybe we can negotiate that position uh, in this episode. We are going to talk about Client Delight. We're going to be talking about this idea of satisfying our customers, our clients, the people we work for, the people we serve with what we offer as businesses. What a fantastic idea! Do you mean that not only do I get to work with you, but I also feel good about it? Yeah. And they'll what? feel good about it. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to get into this. We're going to discuss that possibility we have of delighting the people we serve, um, whether it's as an organization, as an individual, um, whether it's a customer, whether it's a client, whether it's a stakeholder. There's lots of people we can meet delighting. We're going to talk about the strategies that do and don't work, the things that we should and shouldn't do. Can we use tactics? Does that make us inauthentic? Oh, and all Chris. that kind of stuff. This as is well. some of my favorite stuff. The dark side. There's a very dark side, isn't there, to attempting a strategy to get something from someone else or to yeah. make someone feel something. Yeah, and we talk about people pleasing in a negative term mostly. Oh but, yeah, that, I never thought about that. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to please people. Are we? I'm not sure I am. Well, we'll come to that. John, firstly, how are you? I'm actually surprisingly well. I did visit my brilliant dentist. And um, how did that go? They've remedied a fault with my teeth, which is what they're there to do. But not only did they do that, they also made me feel good about uh, myself and they generated a, a great positivity. And as a result, I gave them a five-star Google review and I posted a photo of me with my dentist on, on Google reviews. Wow, so they, they delighted you, their client. How topical. How Very un topical. unbelievably topical. Let's, let's touch on that first. What did they do to delight you? Well, I think they do what any... Good business does when it tries to do client delight is it ignores the client and tries to do delight. I don't, I, my personal view is when you turn someone or something into a customer or a client, you project onto them a status that you must serve them. That status blocks, it blocks your connection. And so we will, we will, be satisfied with client delight, client, but we would much rather feel connection and mm. have a positive connection. And that, that brings us into a relationship, and that is much more sati satisfying than someone sending you a hamper at Christmas. <laughs> so we're talking about not focusing, not focusing on them as a client or customer, but just thinking about how you delight people in general. There has been a big movement in organizations to try to have a partnership approach, to try to see people as on a, on a level. In fact, you have people whose job title is head of new partnerships, and you think, wow, they must be starting a lot of partnerships. And then you realize it's effectively a sales role. But um, it's similar, actually, in terms of client satisfaction. If you want your customers and clients to be satisfied and happy and delighted, one of the keys is to uh, treat them as a, a normal human being. Mm. And, and for you to be human yourself. Yeah, well. and for you to take down your professionalism and your mask. I know it's something that Emily, one of our previous guests, talked about a lot, but that... We can put on that mask, and I've definitely done it when I've been in jobs like being a waiter or running a bar uh, or being a chambermaid, things I've had to do and enjoyed. There's a professionalism and there's a mask that needs to come with it. Actually being a facilitator, mm. sometimes being a CEO, there's, there's a need to, you feel like you need to play a bit of a role. However, when you can try to take those things down, that's what allows you to really connect with people and to to delight them. Mm, and you really have connected with people through your career. You've worked with some big names, some really interesting people as well. How have you managed to delight them? I'm not sure. Do I really give away the secrets? <laughs> I feel I suddenly feel self-conscious. 
What do you like to do? Rapport to building. People? Rapport building. I think, so I, I think rapport building, I, I trained in um, rapport building skills using the NLP techniques when I was in my 20s. And again, it's a little bit of an interesting field. There's a lot of bad things in it, but it was very interesting to think if you, want, if you really want to gain rapport with somebody, how can you do that? And I feel in the customer uh, arena, if, you're, if your business supports other businesses, if you're trying to deliver a service, um, rapport building, and in my own way, with a twist of fun, uh, with a twist, of, with a spark, with a, mm. yeah. But that, I, I like to build rapport, but have an edge of unpredictability. Mm. And it's also a bit controlling, actually. But I like to be in charge. Mm. So I will build rapport and I can lead a person in a relationship. Yeah. And um, that that is a, one of the greatest skills to be successful in mm. nearly any job is can you not just build rapport with someone through appeasing them or compliments or but can mm. you genuinely build a, c- a connection and then can you lead them to where you want them to go yeah and if you want them to go to the if you're if you want to take your your pony to the field of delight <laughs> can you take it there can you can you yeah. connect with that person can you lead them to mm. the the place where they're ecstatic or gently really... like a pony yeah. well uh, yeah <laughs> I, I mean i mean i actually not yeah, forcefully i'm only saying that because i bumped into a couple of police horses in the street and guess what the policeman did he gave me his email address and said, if you'd like to come and see the horses, bring your kids, come wow. to the station. Wow. But he was, he was attempting to yeah, build delight. rapport yeah. and go yeah. the extra mile delight. Yeah, I've seen you do that as well. I've seen that, you called it that, um, that unpredict, um, unpredictability. And I've seen you use that unexpectedness, sometimes unexpectedly generous, sometimes an unexpected compliment, mm. sometimes, like the Google review for your dentist. That, mm, did I you, took did a photo you, as well. Yeah, yeah. He, did, he you, wasn't expecting that. No, didn't ask for it probably. But you went to the effort of doing it. And normally he might be saying, normally I have to ask for those kind of things, but you've offered willingly to do it. And that unexpectedness builds rapport. There's the photo right there. <laughs> wow. It's pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> That's not the one I put on Google Reviews. But, uh, oh, good. I'm glad. But, yeah, I, I think, so, so this is how I was trained as well. So mm. in my career, mm. um, I was responsible for sales training for uh, something like 10,000 car salespeople. And what was interesting about that was that each business had a way to try and satisfy the customer. And it starts with a bit of innovation to, to create the delight. And then that innovation turns into a process. And then once that process is put in place, then it's not a surprise anymore. So when it's not a surprise, it's not a delight. So I, I think delight comes through this twist. Um, the example is that when you used to buy your new car, you then get a bunch of flowers. Yeah. Mm. Which, so you go, you spend a lot of money, you get your car. The first thing is you've got to get all your customer service basics right. Yeah. But let's assume all that good stuff's done. Mm. The car's on time. The communication's good. The car's not got a scratch. It's the one you ordered. It's the right spec. The person's kept in touch with you. And mm. then you get there. And then in the boot, there's a bunch of flowers. And you think, oh, this is... Brilliant. And then when you buy the next car from them, there's a bunch of flowers. You go, all right, that's nice. The next car, where's the flowers? Like, mm. It's just an expectation. Yeah. So the really clever people that I work with there, they, so the businesses there, they would, they would ask people to try and find out, something, find out something about the person and then buy them something as a small gift that was related to what they liked. So let's say they liked a dog, and then when they opened the car, there's a bag of dog biscuits. <laughs> I thought you were going to say dog. <laughs> <The> dog. <laughs> <laughs> a bag of dogs. <laughs> that no. is not appropriate. That no, wouldn't but, delight. But the point is the, the <laughs> flowers actually started costing 50, 60 quid. Right. It might be a five pound bag of dog biscuits. Yeah. And it's like, this is for pooch. Mm. And it's the person really, really yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah. So that, that kind of process is in my mm. repertoire. Mm. But the other thing is I think, I do think, um, as I said, a lot of um, creating great customer connection is also taking down those barriers. And to do that, you have to break frames Mm. So um, if you think through how, if you imagine you've just bought a service from me okay. and we've been through purchasing yep. and we've done the agreement, it starts yep. to set up a frame of how things are going to be. Right. You're the powerful budget holder mm. and I, the lowly service provider, mm-hmm. oh, whatever. But, but mm. um, in order to do that, you, one way to gain more um, influence is to break the frames of that relationship. Uh, I'm just thinking of examples that... that um, might happen for so for example when you go to their offices do they make you the tea or do you make them the tea mm. i always make the tea yeah i try to make the tea and then i take the things to the dishwasher you've seen this a thousand yeah times. i've seen this i don't really want everyone to know about this but <laughs> this is this is my attempt to show them that i'm in charge but it's it, i don't think it's in any way manipulative it's it's 
it's almost habitual. It's habitual. Yeah. But that putting in the dishwasher has yielded people say to me, I've worked here for 20 years and I've never seen any guest ever mm. put their cups in the dishwasher. Mm. And say, so, well, my mum told me that's how we're supposed to yeah. do things. And they're like, okay, that's weird. But I, I think, think it's, it's, a kind of radi- th- it's a kind of radically real way yeah. to be, I think. Yeah, be, be truly authentic. Yeah. Um, so I, and for me, that, that spirit cre- creates this connection. Mm. But there is also how to delight people. And that one's um, almost like a, a hijack, mm. an, an emotional hijack. Can you set up an emotional hijack? Actually, very similar to jokes, I just realized. Mm. So our, our episode on humor mm. is the same process. Can you run a process that leads to an unexpected? Oh, yeah, aha moment. Aha. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. So, so in, in trying to delight a client, that's the approach that I would try to take. For example, the typical one is to make sure that you lowball how much you could get done and then mm. do more. Mm. Would be very... Yeah. So c- can you show them you've made more progress? Can you... Um, I, there's one recent... I, I, don't, I feel uncomfortable talking about this now. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd done a big project. Mm. We got to the end of it. It had gone well. We had the call to finalise all the invoicing. And just say to them, look, we really enjoyed this. We had an agreement about how much work it would be. It may have been more than that. It was more than that. Mm. But genuinely, we want a partnership. So just pay us what you think is appropriate. And we know that you've got your business to run. Let's just do it. Is that okay to do it like that? Mm. That, that kind of um, breaking of the frame, but mm. to giving people an unexpected, oh, right, okay. Yeah. And they have to really think about it and think, is this, is this for real? This has never yeah. happened to me. Yeah, but that's, what, that's, I think, what you're saying. It's a real, it's a real way to deal with the idea of delighting yeah. clients. But Pret, Pret do that, actually. So you know Pret barristers have got the discretion to just give away free coffees? Yeah, I've never got one for free. Yeah, we know why, Chris. You should connect with them. <laughs> I try. I try and warm them up. You <laughs> do know? You do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe try they know. They, uh, this is why nice. I'm trying to yeah, get a free coffee. They're probably trying to, yeah, they're probably working they're, that out. They're very interesting business because they also, on the hiring side, they, the team members decide who's allowed to join. So if as part of your hiring process, you'll, you'll go there and work for a day or two. And then at the end of the day, people say, do we think we should hire Chris? If, if everyone says yes, then mm. hire them. Mm. It's kind of, kind of trial. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. And we, what we're talking about here is more than just client satisfaction. We're, g- we're going beyond in what we've already talked about to delight. Um, it's not just kind of doing what's expected, but as you say, going beyond that to the unexpected. And that unlocks some wow moments. Yeah, and you can, you can only have a wow moment where it is unexpected. And that's the point about the flowers. Thanks for the flowers, by the way. But I was expecting those. Mm. And now it's useless. And, and actually it's, Draining the profit out of the business as well. Mm. So that that uh, the the thing that I would suggest to people is you, you want to think about what you yourself can bring. Mm. So the authentic you yep. is vital. Mm. Then you've got to think about the brand values of the organisation that you're working with, as a as an example. Mm. And then you've also got to combine that with the moment that that customer is in. So delighting them, we we sometimes talk about user user journeys, don't we? But delighting them it is also thinking about where they are at in the in their process or in their emotions. Mm. And perhaps they're at a low point, perhaps they're frustrated with you. You can delight them by how you handle that and say, I am really sorry. I can see that I've done this wrong and I can see that it's very frustrating for you. What is within my power to do to put this right, I will put it right. If you can please bear with me and tell me what I need to do. That might actually delight them, even Mm. though you've made a mistake with something. Mm. I just remember once when I was double booked. This is, a, I was double booked. I double booked myself, and I, I it's because I got offered a new project at the same time as the previous project, which I shouldn't really have taken, but it was a lot of money, so I said yes to it. And then I went back to the other person and said, "I'm really sorry, I can't do this piece of work because I'm double booked." And they said, "Do you know what? In 20 years of doing this job of bookings, no one's ever said that to me before." They said to me. My kid's sick. I'm sick. My dog's sick. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. I've yeah. had... Doing my hair. <laughs> I, I, it's just, uh, you gave me the wrong dates. Right, I've right. got the wrong dates. Yeah, There's been some been mistake. Been in the Because I, I said to them, I'm double booked, but also I know I've done it, and this mm. is the reason why. And they were very, very surprised. Mm. And um, I think they yeah, were delighted. Unexpected. I think they were delighted, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. It's like, so there's that crossover of company values, what we uniquely can do, and the moment. And the moment. The, the moment. moment that client. And that's what can bring the wow. In. So you've got to... Yeah. Um, and we did some work on this, didn't we, with a uh, 
Premier League football club. We did. Fan engagement. Indeed. But it's yeah. the same process. How do you delight a fan mm. when you're stood outside the stadium, your ticket didn't get you in, mm. and you could hear the game going on, and you yeah. know someone scored a goal. Yeah, frustrated. And you're frustrated. Yeah, yeah. You want someone to, to tell you what's happening, mm. not someone to just pretend that like, nothing's Give happening. Give you that new ticket, get you in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, also maybe you. to have a video monitor so you yeah. can see what's happening in the stadium while you're waiting. Yeah. The train company's done that. They, they mm. now give you good data to some extent on where your train is, why it's not happening. But before, yeah. you used to just be waiting. Yeah. And, and where the empty carriage is so that you can find your space. Exactly. All that, kind of all that extra yeah. mile. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so this isn't just a nice to have. This is essential for running organizations, generating new business as well. I think the surprise part is really valuable. I don't think mm. it's necessarily essential. I think mm. there's a lot of good businesses that run great, fantastic client engagement, do a brilliant job and are very profitable and are fun to work in. But the the surprise element is, I think, what makes it different. And I think the people that do that are also more successful. So the, mm. the car salesperson who is actually listening so hard to what the interests are that when they come back, there's a canoe paddle in the boot or whatever. That person is working a lot harder mm. and will create more delight. Mm. And other people might, may not even notice, actually. No. So is it better to get all of the basics right but basically never have a wow moment or get the basics right most of the time but weave in those wow moments is there a better approach yeah i'd go for the basics every time would you i know that's controversial but i think i I don't think you should offset doing the basics brilliantly by then doing wow moments Mm. to make up the, Mm. the the equation Sometimes brilliant, but sometimes not, is awful. Imagine if you're, that was your partner or your, your, ma- your business partner. Yeah. Sometimes they're brilliant. <laughs> it's probably me now. Sometimes they're brilliant, <laughs> sometimes not. But I would rather have consistency. Yeah. So I think you should, what they talk in sport, world-class basics. I think mm. you as an organization, if you really care mm. about customers, are like mm. world-class basics. Mm. And then because all the time you save because you've got that process nailed and you do it consistently well, mm. use that time and energy for delight. Mm. There we go. That's what I would do. Yeah. Do I, so I wouldn't trade off. No. And I also, I think it's really, I really have a principled objection to um, getting to know someone really well and then using your relationship mm. as a proxy to kind of slightly not do as good a job. Mm. And I've, I see that happen a lot, actually, that, some people that believe that because they know the person well and we get we get on it's you know mm. so if i'm a bit late on this mm. they won't mind mm. no i think that's really yeah. poor but it's supposed to work the other way around because you've got a strong relationship you go an extra mile you you, you make sure it's yeah. done yeah. on time yeah. properly yeah you've probably got to lean in more to your professionalism because you're temp- yeah. tempted to not be professional but i see a lot of professional context. services companies and a lot of people who work at senior levels who act like that they use their relationship to get away with mm. not doing world-class basics yeah and if you were coaching someone who wanted to improve their their client delight it's something they are invested in they want to take steps towards it what would you recommend what kind of questions would you be asking that person i i i think so i've got to think you've you've got to relate back to what you come to work for why you're there are you there to do a good job is that what, what do you come to work for do you want in any way to be special, different, refreshing? Is there something other than just world-class basics? My, my dental receptionist, is she there for anything more than brilliantly booking appointments, calling people back? Like, does she want to give of herself to, to, to do something that's brilliant? Do you want to connect with people? There was a great article in The Guardian recently that said we've lost the art of talking to strangers. But do you want to, do you want to connect with people? Would you, do you want to be alive in the world and acting? Or do you, like, even... Even the dog walkers these days are on their phones. You, you've gone out into this beautiful place. Mm. You've got your dog. You're mm. walking. Well done. Yeah. On your phone. Just so. So I got. I think you've got to think. What is your purpose? Why do you come to work? Do you want to put in a small amount of inspiration? And do you want the payback of that? Like it's really, really exciting when you do something that, that really makes someone happy. And I think if you if you want to put that extra in, then that is where work becomes interesting. Because now you've got a project that's basically on your own time and effort, that's discretionary, that you can do if you want to, to make people happy mm. and uh, to do it generously, not so that it reflects well on you, mm. but so that 
I don't know if I can use this word, to bless them, to, <laughs> to say good luck to you. Go, this is for you. This yeah, is not, yeah. I'm not doing this to get a payback. Mm. I'm doing this for you because mm. I want to. Yeah. A spirit of generosity. I quite like owning people pleasing as a positive term. It's a very, that's I a think very clever thing. Take that on, I think how that's could what you're you, describing. How could you take that people pleasing and professional, like turn it into a, a, a thing? Yeah. What does that mean? I quite enjoy that. I like pleasing you as my manager. I like pleasing other people, my colleagues. I like doing things that make them go, oh, he cares. I was, I, I like saw that. you do it yesterday, actually, when you said to Rachel, she said, I'm a bit behind. You said, can I help you? Mm. And she Easy didn't know what to, to say. <laughs> Easy question to ask. It's a very hard thing to offer, though, for I'm, most people. I'm doing it to people, please. And I'm okay with that. But you're happy to be pleasing someone. Exactly. But you're not just doing it to people, please. I'm also doing it to get the job done. I know that someone will be pleased from that work being done. There's a client on the other end of it. There's a... A account manager that's also pleased but by that work it, being it's done. It's not even just about that. It's something. There's something within you about your values that you've decided that that's a method of expression for you. Mm. Tell tell us about that. I think it's what I'm saying. I I, I value people pleasing as a as a thing as a thing to do. Um, I think it comes from wanting other people to feel happy, to go home happy, to go home feeling like they got all their stuff done. So you're prepared to put it's, in It's extra. not so much the, about the hard work, but about the, the payoff from being able to go and relax, spend time with your family, all that kind of stuff as well. Mm. You know, hang out, go and hang out with your friends because you're happy you've done all your work for so today. You're prepared to go the extra mile. Yeah. It's a great expression. <laughs> we should write that down. <laughs> go write the down, extra yeah. mile. Go the extra mile. Or the extra yard. Extra uh, meter. I think meter, yeah. yeah. A lot of people Kilometer. aren't prepared to go the extra centimeter, though, are they? <laughs> no. Some not the extra millimeter. Are you, you're prepared to go the extra mile. Are you prepared to go the extra marathon? <sighs> I mean, that's a stretch. That's a long way. Yeah, yeah. I could build up to that. I could train myself. Yeah. Um, should we also talk about the other side when it doesn't go right? We should do, really. So when have you upset? Oh, I can't say much about that. I've been, I've, Chris, I've been a naughty boy. Oh, no. Tell me about that. There's two good ones. One, uh, Oh, this is so th- it's hard to talk about. Hard to talk about. Difficult, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I'm just, I don't want to say the organization, but one no. was a owner led organization. And I made the CEO shout and storm out of a meeting. And it was because he was having agreed the project. He was trying to get the price down. He was trying to use his power to mm. get the price down. Mm. We would all, I'd already agreed with the CEO what we we're going to do. I'd agreed mm. the marketing director what we we're going to do. And he then came in and tried to demean me. And uh, I said to them all, I was thinking on my feet as well. And I was not as experienced as I am now. I was only probably about 27 and I needed the work, but I thought, do you know what? I, I'm not going to be treated like this. Mm, it's maybe a values thing. Yeah. It was a values conflict. Yeah. yeah. And he said, so he had said like, oh, what's this ridiculous money, amount of money you're charging? It's ridiculous. I said, well, I've had the agreement of your CEO. I've had the agreement of your marketing director. It's already committed. And, I, and we've already committed work to do this. And he's, and so we we discussed it further and I said, well, you know, this is how I want to handle it. And then he was looking really angry. And then eventually we got to a deal. As, actually, no, the, eventually got to a deal. He stuck out his hand and said, right, we'll, we'll do it for that money then. And I said, well, look, I mean, shaking your hands pointless because I've had the agreement of your CEO and that proved worthless. And I've had the agreement of your marketing director and that proved worthless. Mm-hmm. So until the bank money's in my bank account, I'm not doing any more work on this. And he oh. went, it was like jackpot anger. <laughs> Like, it's like you know when you're at the arcade and the ticket machine just spins to 500 and they all pay out yeah yeah wow he just it w- went off he went off and just left without the payout and then the, the <laughs> ceo and the marketing person then said well i don't know what we do here i said well um it's up to you because this it's is great you're, you're the ones who wanted <laughs> yeah. the work done yeah uh and anyway eventually the money was quickly put into my bank account because they really want me to do the work so that was not mm. client to like at all it's no. like i don't care if you're happy no. i don't care uh, how you feel, but mm. um, I'm going to risk it. So that was one. That wasn't delight at all, but it did. It was effective. Do the you other, regret your approach to that? That one, not at all. No. But the other one, I do because I lost a million pounds at least. <laughs> oh no! With a single email, which is the. I don't know if you know this story where the someone makes a mistake and they, it costs the company twenty thousand, and then they go to the boss and say, "I'm really sorry, I've made this mistake. I know you're going to fire me." And the boss says, "I'm not going to fire you because I've just spent twenty thousand educating you." Now put it behind you and move on. But I did send an email that um, lost our company more than a million pounds once. 
Can you talk about that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was through misunderstanding what someone wanted. And um, we had had a project. We were um, we had COVID come along, so we had some change that we had to deal with. And through that process, we consulted them, what do you want us to do? I thought I understood what they wanted us to do. And I went back with the email to share how we we're going to go about it. And they, and I had, to some extent, misunderstood what they wanted me to do. Or at least I hadn't read the room. And they came back and said, we never want to work with you again. Uh, and I thought, this is, this is not good. And it's because I wasn't experienced enough. And I, I, in, in my highest level, I kind of knew that I should just do whatever they wanted us to do. Mm. But because of the situation, I had, hadn't fully grasped how to go about Mm. refinessing this project mm. it sounds and like you hadn't worked out exactly where they were at either that was I, the I component had, that was missing I hadn't about fully before. understood where they were at and I hadn't fully understood where we were at mm. I, hadn't, I hadn't understood where we were at with them mm. and um, yeah so they said we never want to work with you again and we said oh that's interesting because we've got lots of projects that we're committed to that you've also committed to that mm. that we've got under contract they said yeah we don't want to work with you anymore great okay it becomes then, messy it was messy yeah mm. but um, it was also interesting in that they fired us effectively before having worked out how to get all the things done. We still had a lot of leverage. Mm. So it's quite a, it wasn't pretty. No. It wasn't good. Yeah. But uh, it also wasn't bad. And there might be situations where you do win out, you win work, but uh, as you say, you, you haven't delighted and there's that feeling of. Yeah. And we obviously hadn't people. delighted. If we had delighted them, they would have still wanted mm. to work here. But, yeah. but, but my point is that um, you can't, you have to, back, back to people pleasing, you cannot mm. please everybody. No. And you will also make mistakes. Mm. And I think uh, you have to be able to live with those and, and put those behind you to some extent. If it's mm. cost you time or money, then you have to be able to live with it. Mm. And um, especially if you work in a client-facing environment, there's going to be often days where things go wrong. I, I work, I travel a lot. So I meet a lot of people at the airlines. Some people are just flying around the world angry. And <laughs> no matter what the airline staff try to do, they're not happy. Some people in hotels, the same. Uh, mm. In fact, I was recently on a train... And I was coming back from a football match and it was a busy train. And some people had sat in the car carriage that I was in because I got the weekend upgrade for £15. Very nice. Yeah, so I was in first class, but sneaky, £15. And I, I assumed that everybody else in there also paid the £15 because it's only £15, guys. Not a lot, is it? Come on. Yeah. But the very noisy people, turns out when the ticket inspector came, they hadn't paid the £15 and they didn't want to pay the £15. So they then were trying to get out of paying the fifteen pounds. Mm. It's like, guys, this is. Firstly, you've been really noisy for the whole time, and now I was a little bit annoyed actually. Now I found out that you're not even supposed to be in here and don't want to be in here. Mm. I'm a bit annoyed how noisy you've been. Before I didn't mind because it's like you're supposed to be here. You paid the money, fine. Yeah, yeah. But um, then they were trying to say to the ticket inspector that, um, yeah, yeah, we're going to move in a minute. He's like, can you move now? Because if you're not going to pay it, you need to move. Well, we're just waiting for our friend to come back from the toilet. <laughs> It's like, well, he can he can come back and then yeah. go back, but he's his own independent person. Move now, yeah, yeah. but we can't because we can't carry the bags. <laughs> we can't. And I just, do you know what? It's like, do you know what? You work in a job like that, yeah. And you've got people that are being difficult to you, and he kept his composure. Mm. He said, "Well, I, I want you to move." I don't think he was going to delight them. No, but he had to deal with that, so he's got to somehow have yeah. that um, resilience and, and mm. strength of character. Mm. But I got so annoyed that I got up and I went over and I said, I stood behind the ticket inspector. And I said, I said, this guy's just trying to do his job. You will either pay the money or move now. And we're not having any of this about the guy going to the toilet. Wow. And uh, I think I delighted the ticket inspector. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I delighted. I bet it was unexpected. It was unexpected, everyone. yeah. But yeah. I, I actually, but this is the kind of thing that people who work in those kind of jobs, they have mm. all day to deal with people like that. Mm. He is not going to make those people happy. But uh, I feel like I made him happy, actually. Mm. And then um, they got really angry with me. And they're like, who are you? What's this? You? No, 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 no. I said, guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you've been in here. They also lied afterwards. They said, we got on at this other stop. So they were trying to, I said, mm. you've been in here. You, great. You can afford 15 pounds. Either pay it or go back to the other. Well, don't pay it. Yeah. yeah. I move. It's, but you, 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 can't, you can never go at me all you like, but mm. it's you that's in the wrong. Anyway, then two of them paid it. Did they? And then the other ones wouldn't pay it. And I was like, no, no, you're all going to pay it. But I feel like the person in the hospitality jobs, they've got the hardest job to mm. constantly delight people. And you can't yeah. always delight everybody. Yeah, you can't always delight them. And sometimes it's just about managing the people you can't yeah. please. 
I, I should caveat this, and the person I was with was really not slightly annoyed with me because oh, I'd really? created a bad atmosphere. Oh, no. So Didn't delight your Yeah. So then guess what companion. I had to do? Guess what I had to do next? What did you do? After about five minutes of them being annoyed, I just went and sat on the seats next to them. Oh, yeah. So guys, how's your day going? Like, you're talking a lot about football. How did it go? Yeah, yeah. I just used my rapport building to get in the back. Uh, of the By the end, they were delighted. Wow. It's, it's Again, a victory. Unexpected. It's a victory, victory. for rapport building. A victory for rapport and, building. Uh, principles, yeah. And customer delight. They weren't your customers, but you went the extra mile. Uh, I went the, uh, they went a lot of extra miles, actually. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah. achieved, they stole they the miles. They missed their stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we should wrap up our podcast. It's been a pleasure. Um, but first, tell us more about the clients we're delighting. Who are you working with at the moment? Well, we work with some of the world's most famous companies. I'm thinking about m and I'm thinking about Cisco. I'm thinking about Slack, actually, and mm. I'm thinking about some of the great Swiss companies that we work with as well, like Siemens, mm. Airbus. And uh, we're often working in this emotional intelligence space how you can build a relationship that, uh, that is generous and creates very positive feelings. Sometimes that's in a sales or selling environment. Sometimes it's in a marketing environment. Sometimes it's um, just as a leadership level. But this empathetic process of stepping back, thinking about another person, thinking about what they want, thinking about what their emotions that they're, they're involved with, thinking about how you can contribute that as a good and generous citizen of your organization or your, or your, or your customer base is a big part of the work we do. And to do that, you have to be in a good space yourself. So we also do a lot of work on self-leadership and how you can show up for work as your authentic self and bring your personality, which is, I guess, the, the sparkle of the spark, yeah. the magic. How, yeah. how you can be that authentic self and, and how you can um, influence and, and um, run a process or have a, have a strategy to bring the best out of others and to give them a great day. Um, so we do a lot of that work and it's very enjoyable. Mm. Um, ho- hopefully we do like most of our clients most of the time. Yeah, hope so. Sometimes we just do world-class basics and sometimes we don't even do that. But on aggregate... I think we do an excellent job yeah. with a brilliant team. And as we say, doing all the basics right and the occasional wow moment leaves clients delighted. It can make them very, very happy. Yeah. John, I thank you for joining me for this episode. Chris, thank um, you. If you've enjoyed this episode, do give it a like and subscribe to the channel, to the People podcast. People do this. Yeah, it's down below, somewhere around. I know. don't know. Do you think we need likes and subscribers? I'm not so sure. Uh, I think it helps in the, in the algorithms. Yeah. 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 And, and it's also nice to see. Was this a topic you enjoyed? I would so. really like to get some comments, though. The likes and subscribes are great, but I'd oh, love to see some little maybe a comments. comment. And yeah. don't be one of those people that is hard to please. <laughs> if you if we've pleased you with this episode, pay your fifteen pounds. No, no, just leave a comment. Leave, leave a, comment. a comment. We'd love that. Leave a comment. And uh, if you want to see more about interactive workshops, you can go to interactiveworkshops.com. Is that how it is? It's just in- that's how easy it is. Interactiveworkshops.com. Interactiveworkshops.com. Simple, easy. Love it. Right. Thank, Thank you, Chris. See you next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching this video by Interactive Workshops. Give it a like down below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Click through to here or here to watch another video by Interactive Workshops.